Winterfell, she heard Rob Shart. Shart. <laughs> Rob Sharting down his hill. Fuck yeah. I'm done, man. Getting it's it. Like, yes. I'm retiring. Winterfell. <laughs> What up, and welcome to another episode of Brotherhood Without Manners, your favorite full spoiler reread podcast of George R. R. Martin's Song of Ice and Fire series. I'm Nate, joining me as always, my brother and co-host, Zach. Are you not? We, you, I I didn't have a weird sound effect to go in with, and then it threw everything (laughs) on. Hey, I'm Zach! I'm the awkward one who doesn't know how to fucking do an intro. Gee. We, uh, we like to get into some Game of Thrones here and do, do some (laughs) sniffing around. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, if you listen to Tyrion 8, I do apologize, I was not feeling good and he fucked up recording and then uh and then i managed to we took a little break and then i came back and we were feeling a little bit better so if there's a bit you of a we're feeling but i was, I was. fine if I there was, was a fine. bit of a, sh- uh, a tone shift in the last three quarters of the episode we apologize for that but we needed to take a little break because i was ugh, not feeling so good but i'm feeling much better this week and i'm quite glad that i am because we have a really good chapter i said this yeah. week yeah, this episode I'm feeling say. better this episode and we got a good chapter this episode. Yeah, 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 so if you joined us last episode, we were reading Tyrion Eight, and that was the the battle, the battle yeah. the, uh, uh, from Tyrion's side. So essentially, we got that Tywin thought it was Rob's entire host, but it really was just as we knew the contingent led by Roos Bolton. Roos Bolton down, which wasn't the entire force of Rob's men. Rob had taken them and split them at the Twins, which was a whole big deal that they were working to keep secret. And so in Tyrion's chapter, we got that battle of Roose Bolton versus You got the Lannister Lannisters. victory. Yeah, and the Lannisters smashed them. They absolutely decimated them. Tyrion had a couple close calls himself, managed to hold his own, and and earned some respect from his clans. And I think from Bra- Bronn and even possibly from his father. And Kevin though, And Kevin, certainly. And then, yeah, we but then we learned that Rob Stark was indeed not here. And he's on his way to River Run. And so we pick it up immediately in Catelyn 10, where we are getting now where Rob Stark and Catelyn have been. And it says that the wor- woods were full of whispers. And Catelyn is awaiting news of the battle. Hollis Mullen is sitting beside her, telling her that it won't be long now. And Mullen had specifically asked for the honor of protecting Catelyn in the battle trap to come. Yeah, the ambush they've set. And so Rob had insisted that she had a guard. She had initially asked for 10. Rob wanted 50. They settled on 30. Neither of them was happy about that. Mm. Um, I reversed my notes, so now I have to find where I was. So Kat tells him, because uh, Hollis Mullen had said, it won't be long now, my yeah. lady. She says it, it'll come when it comes. And she knew... Um, I can't read my fucking writing, man. She knew that uh, when it comes, it it would mean death. Death is the word that I couldn't read of mine. Hall's death, perhaps, or hers, or Rob's. No one was safe. No life was certain. Keep it safe. Keep it certain. Okay. Keep it secret. Yeah, I know what you're... I I don't care if you knew. That's like... Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Tone it down, bro. But it says that she was was content to wait. She didn't mind waiting out here. She's used to it. To the whispers in the woods. The whispers in the woods? And the faint music of the brook. But uh, she says, yeah, she's no stranger to waiting. Her men had always made her wait. Watch for me, little cat, her father would always tell her before riding off to court or fair or battle, and she would. Standing patiently on River Run's battlements, and sometimes days would pass with cat standing her vigil until at last she would glimpse him trotting along the shore. Did you watch for me, he'd ask as he bent to hug her. Did you, little cat? What a waste of time. Sitting there just waiting, waiting. But no, so yeah, on top of that, she also waited for Brandon Stark to return. Cruel. Yeah, fuck it. Fuck it. Going in. Um, And then Brandon Stark didn't return, and then she waited for Ned to return after he returned in Brandon's place it's there's a lot of returning and going and coming and and cats left waiting throughout it all man 
All yeah, of it. and even after, uh, yeah, Ned had li- lingered for barely a fortnight before he rode off to war with promises on his lips was the line, which I just, I liked. Promises but, on his lips. But, but at least time, he'd given her a son. Yeah. And nine months later, Rob was born in River Run while Ned warred in the South. And she birthed him, not knowing if Ned would ever see him again. And she thinks her son, because now it was for Rob she waited. For Rob and for Jamie Lannister. And the Gilded Knight, who Ned said, oh, y'all excuse me. Damn. Wow. I'm, well, wow. I just, I haven't had coffee today, and it's wild. The Gilded Man that men said had never learned to wait at all. Which is 100% accurate, and why would a man like Jamie Lannister wait? He's got all the money to afford not waiting. Yeah, we learned that her uncle Brendan, the Blackfish, had much to say about Jamie, saying that the Kingslayer is restless and quick to anger, and that we learned that they had waged their lives and their best chance of victory so on the truth of that Martin, statement. Yeah, Martin gets really tricky here with this chapter in the way he keeps jumping from this little battle meeting beforehand and current what's going yeah. on now. And so there'll be a few times where it's finally going to piece together the plot, the, what's actually happening. Well, we're, I mean, we're full spoiler. Cat is sitting, at this point, Rob has sprung his trap and ridden off and was attacking Jamie and hoping that Jamie's rashness would lead him into the trap. So at this point, they have rushed off, and the battle's gone silent. She had heard some of it, but it's quieted, and she's thinking now while waiting for Rob and Jamie to return. Hopefully, she's thinking the trap went the way it's supposed to, and they have Jamie captive now. So she's waiting for them and news of the battle. So she's worried as hell, and so she's replaying kind of everything that they went over in her head and just waiting for the, the conclusion to this. But it does get tricky because she very she thinks right up to the moment right before we're he, at yeah, right like, now and the moment right Rob rides off. So it gets a little tricky, but yeah. So it said that if Rob had been frightened, he showed no sign of it. Moving among his men, jesting with one, helping another calm an anxious horse, and his auburn hair so like her own, just blowing in the breeze. And she wondered when he'd grown so big, 15 and near tall as her. So, yeah, she's a parent dealing with the fact that her son is leading a host of Yeah, war. which he's doing great. Yeah. And so she prays to the gods that he'll have the chance to grow taller even and, you mm. know, have the opportunity to hold his own child and, you know, all the things a parent wants for their kid. And I just like this description she gave of him. She says, as she watched him, this tall young man with the new beard and the dire wolf prowling at his heels, all she could see was the babe laid at her breast at River Run all those years ago. And the thought of River Run makes her shiver. Where are they, she wonders. Could the Blackfish have been wrong? Jamie doesn't know, he had said. He had promised. No bird has reached him, and those outriders that we did see did not live to tell of it. He does not know. And yeah. he's refer- this is referring to the fact that Rob split his army and is now waiting right. outside River Run. So, yeah, so then we get back another flashback when uh, Blackfish had returned. He had been given 300 men, picked men by Rob, to scout ahead and make sure that nobody knew. Mm-hmm. And so taking out birds and scouts alike. And uh, Rob asks how large the, the host is collectively. Yeah. And he answers 12,000 foot scattered in three separate camps. And he kind of gives a pride sm- prideful smile, saying that's the only way you can siege River Run with the rivers. But uh, also two or 3,000 horse. And Galbert Glover points out that the Kingslayer has us two to one. And Blackfish says, true enough, yet we have something Sir Jamie lacks, and that is patience. And so far as we know, that is absolutely true. And actually knowing Jamie as a character, that is absolutely true. And again, full spoiler, what they're referring to here is that Jamie doesn't want to just sit there and siege. He can't sit still and wait for the run out. out And so they're going to stage a queue. And raid a town, a village, an area, uh, Lannister forces in some way, and it's going to draw Jamie in, and they're going to ambush him. Yeah, and so it, we also learned that on their way south, their host had grown, gone, gotten bigger since uh, leaving the twins. Jason Malister had joined his power from Sea Guard to theirs, and others crept it forth as well. Hedge knights, small lords, and masterless man- men at arms who were coming north from. Edmure's shattered army that Jamie had already done. These men 
booked ass for this northern host. Yeah. And, then, and some of them just making it in time to actually assist for this trap that they're setting up. So Kat watched her son as he mounted up, and we get Oliver Frey, which, as we remember, was one of the squ- Walder right. Frey's demands was that Rob take a Frey for his squire. Two years older than Rob and ten years younger and yeah. more anxious. I had to reread that line yeah. like so six that's times. A, that's a tough to, one to, yeah. to get. So essentially saying that, you know, this guy is two years older than Rob, so 18 years old. But the way he's experienced life, his you know where he's been, he's ten years younger than yeah. Rob. So which even like technically in Catelyn's mind, that puts him younger than Bran. Right, he acts worse than Bran. Right, he like he's more. This is how she would expect Rickon to act exactly. in a in a war like situation with how nervous the kid looks and and anxious. Yeah, and, yeah compared to Rob especially. And, and so he handed him up his shield and his helm, and it says, When Rob lowered the helm over his face, a tall young knight sat on the gray stallion where her son had been. When Rob turned to look at her, she saw only black in his visor. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I don't, that's just ominous. Seems so, ominous. yeah, I definitely black always has that, especially when it's replacing your eyes, but... Um, she tells, he, he says that he, his men must see him, that, uh, it inspires courage. Yeah, he's got to ride down the line. He heard from his father. And so she tells him, go then, let them see you. And he, he says it again, it will give them courage. And she thinks to herself, but who will give, or no, that's the protect me, huh? No, who will oh, give was, me courage? Who will give yeah. me courage? I had it. Uh-huh. Who will give me courage? She thought as Rob turned his horse and walked slowly away from her. Yeah, she's. She's tripping out about this way more than Rob is because yeah. she's got a she can't do anything. She can't pick up a sword and go protect her son in battle as right. I'm sure she would love to do. Well, which we find out she d- does the best she can by making sure he has a battle guard. Well, yeah, because they I, form up right behind him here. I mean, but essentially, but yeah, her protecting it. Bran with, from the assassin is the most physical that Catelyn is expected, tolerated, allowed to get in this world, really. So, and and we know that she's a strong woman. Absolutely, if she was given the chance, she'd be riding at Rob's side like, oh, yeah. to defend him herself. But she can't, so it's just this thought of... He, who, who's, what do I who, do? Yeah, who's going to give me the courage to not worry about you and your sisters in King's Landing and your father in the cell and the two boys at Winterfell? Ain't and nobody. Ain't nobody. Yeah, so then, yeah, we get a description of the battle guard that was chosen to protect Yeah, Rob. people clamored for the honor, the mainly sons of the bannermen. Uh, they all wanted to ride with the young wolf, as they had taken to calling him. Among his 30 were Torin Karstark and his brother Eddard, as, <laughs> well, <laughs> as well as Patrick Malister, Small John Umber, Darren Hornwood, Theon Greyjoy, and no less than five of Walder Frey's vast brood. One of his companions was even a woman, Daisy Mormont, Lady, Fuck yeah, Mar- Daisy. Lady Marge's eldest daughter and heir to Bear Island. Some of the other lords complained, but Catelyn would not hear it. This is not about the honor of your houses, she told them. This is about keeping my son alive and whole. And so Daisy Mormont is a surefire fucking way to Fuck do that. Yeah. We, from what we know of the Mormons, they're all pretty badass. Even still, Catelyn wonders if that would be enough, whether it was six or 6,000. Yeah. Does it matter how many? Is it going to be enough to protect him? And so a bird call in the distance picks up, and it feels like an icy hand on Catelyn's neck. And others pick up the call, and she recognizes them from Winterfell. Snow strikes. She would, they would sometimes find them in the God's Wood when everything was snowy and still. They were northern birds. And as she thinks this, she thinks they are coming. And actually, I have the quote. They are coming, Catelyn thought. They are coming, my lady, Hal Morin whispered. Gods be with us. So now here's my quick little question. Is it actually snow strikes, or do the Northmen know how to replicate the call, and that's how they let them know? That was the first message of their coming. Mm. They're their first entering the valley here. Because we know that uh, Mage Mormont will blow her horn, after the last one enters the trap. So was it one of the Northmen giving that, and that's the call to let them know it's beginning, shut the fuck up, no more whispering in the woods? I don't know, because is this... 
because that would be what sparks her thought, like, because it's a northern bird, so only they'll know. And she knows that that's the, the call, and because basically uh, Mal, Hal Mullen, he basically is just repeats the most obvious shit anyway. Yeah. And so if that's just what everyone knows is going to be the call, she thinks it to herself. He has to say it out loud. Yeah, it definitely seems to be some sort of call sign, but I guess my only other thought was maybe it was some sort of part of the north, like these birds of the north that are actually warning them too. Like, yeah, yeah like yeah. your trap's ready to spring. Go Just for some it. Some kind of the northern Ba-ba. element that's protecting. But yeah, because she it's... she even notes that Hal Mullen is one for pointing out the fucking obvious. So if this was like a pre-planned. We'll give the bird calls, yeah. and then that'll signal it's time to spring. And he's saying it out loud, like, yeah, he needs to point out the obvious because everyone in the Whispering Wood currently know that the bird calls mean shut the fuck up, we're doing it. Yeah. And so she nods as the woods just completely grow still, and she could hear them, Jamie Lannister and his men, the far-off tread of the many horses, the rattle of swords and spears and armor, and human voices jesting and cursing. Yeah, these motherfuckers have no clue. Yeah. No clue that they're about to get fucked up. They're entering the killing floor, and so eons seem to pass. Eons. Eons. Theons. Theons. Uh, And the sound grew louder and louder, and at last she saw him only for an instant between some trees, yet she knew it was him. Even at this distance, Jamie Lannister was unmistakable. Moonlight silvered his armor and hair and turned his crimson cloak black. He was not wearing a helm. He was not wearing a helm is what Zack said there. And, yeah, so then we get another flashback. Yeah. And it's Blackfish talking to Rob, telling him that Jamie gets impatient. And this is where we had mentioned a little bit uh, he, he can't stand sitting around at the siege. So he goes out to deal with raiders or stubborn holdfasts that aren't bending the knee. Yeah, he, he's a man of action. He needs to be swinging that sword, especially in, in wartime. Yeah. So, so nodding, Rob had studied the map her uncle had drawn him. Ned taught him to read maps. <gasps> Raid him here, he said, pointing. A few hundred men, no more. Tully banners. And once he pursues, we will be waiting. He moves his finger an inch to the left. Here. So I know that there's some cool literary methods used here that I didn't actually write out where Catelyn says here and then lists the multiple things that here is. Yeah. And I like that a lot. How it breaks down the, the, the trap, essentially. So, yeah, Rob's finger on the map here. Here was a densely wooded ridge sloping gently down to the stream breadth. St- the what now? The stream bed. Stream bed. Yeah. So keep in mind that stream bed. Just that's nothing all. like a good sleep in a stream that's bed. That's it. Right. Here was her son on his stallion, glancing back at her one last time, lifting his sword in salute. Lifting his sword in salute. And I feel like I just can just see that. That head throw with the with the hair <laughs> waving in the wind. like I can't wait for dramatic Rob, which is coming really soon. Yeah. Here was the call of Mage Mormont's war horn, a long, low blast to tell the last of Jamie's ri- to oh. tell them the last of Jamie's riders had entered the trap. And yeah. Grey Wind threw back his head and howled. He lets out a terrible howl, and that's joined basically by all the war horns throughout the valley because they all start within their own little packs going yeah, off. The sound of Grey Wind's howl went right through Catelyn, and she found herself shivering. A terrible, frightening sound, yet there was music in it too. Just like the music of the, the stream earlier, for which a, ha- is unrelated to me telling you to remember the stream. For a second, she felt something like pity for the Lannisters below her. So this is what death sounds like, she thought. Fuck, I love that line. I do too. So much. The Whispering Wood. Well, so before we get to... uh, It just kind of occurred to me that she's mentioned the music a few times. This is what death sounds like. And then the brains of Castamir is going to be playing this death music. Mm -hmm. And so it's just so many little ties to it all. Yeah, she's so focused on the music here. And Mm. she's only focused on the music at... The rain, uh, the crazy. red wedding with the doom, gloom, doom. Gloom. So the whispering woods, because uh, the the archers and the trees shot finally let loose, and the whispering wood let out its breath all at once. Yeah. 
That's right, what it sounds like it. when a bunch of arrows are shot out, apparently. <laughs> From the Whispering Wood. From the Whispering Wood, I guess. So, yeah. Bowman Rob had hidden in the trees, let fly their arrows, and the knights erupted with the screams of horses and men alike. All around her, riders raised their lances, the dirt and leaves that had hidden them falling away to reveal the gleam of the sharpened steel. Winterfell, she heard Rob shart. Shards. <laughs> Rob sharting down his hill. Fuck yeah. I'm done, man. Getting it's it. Like, yes. I'm retiring. Winter fed. Oh, sharted. Sorry. Can we start this over? Talk about a brain shark. Go back out and pretend you didn't see us. We got to yell surprise correctly. Hold on. Fuck. <laughs> Winterfell, she heard Rob shout as arrows sighed again. He led his men downhill at a trot. Catelyn sat on her horse, unmoving with Hall Mullen and her guard as she had waited before for Brandon and Ned and her father. She was high up in the trees, hid most of what was going on beneath her. And in four heartbeats, her and her guards were alone. Brr, done. That's because my just heartbeat runs like that. Just with the lingering smell of the shark. With the <laughs> <laughs> Rob sharts. Fucking A. And Rob so, sharted Winterfell. It says that yet looking to the far ridge, she saw the Great John's riders emerge from beneath the trees in a long, endless line. For a heartbeat, the moonlight on the lance points looked as if a thousand willow wisps were descending the ridge wreathed in silver flame. That's a fucking sweet visual. It's really Does cool. it mean anything? Um, Depends on the lore that you're going to for Will-O-Wisps, really, because yeah. they can be said to lead people to into death. the afterlife, mm-hmm. or both maliciously and uh, in just naturally. Yeah, to... yeah, and so, they, yeah, the depends, I guess, really. And then she blinked, and they were only men rushing down to kill or die, which is just what a follow-up. Yeah. So afterwards, she could not claim that she had seen the battle, but she did hear it. Lances breaking, swords clashing, cries of Lannisters or Winterfell or Tully, Tully and River Run. And she closed her eyes to listen to the battle, and the battle came alive around her, which just remind me of Arya. Yeah. And Arya's little method of doing it in the dungeons below King's Landing. Good. I'm glad you said that. Because I have this theory coming up soon that I'm very excited to bring up to the attention of you and our listeners. She heard hoofbeats, iron boots in shallow water, steel scraping steel, the hiss of arrows, the thunder of drums, the terrified screaming of a thousand horses. But the ridge seemed to play queer tricks with sound. She heard Rob as if he was right next to her, shouting, To me! To me! Calling to me. Not even shouting. Yeah. Just calling. Calling. And his direwolf snarling and growling, tearing flesh and the shrieks of fear and pain from man and horse alike. Was there only one wolf? It was hard to be certain. Boom! There it is. Here comes this magic. He's not the only wolf there. Nameria fucking joined the battle, yo. Have you looked at a map of where she was set free? That bitch is right there. I think that Nymeria is there fighting with this, with Grey Wind. Because it's not far away from where Arya set her free. And they're, it, it, just the way they talk about how there's monster, wo- like the more than one wolves, the snarling and the, I actually think there was another wolf there. Because the amount of time that's passed, it's been almost a year. And there's no reason that if Grey Wind was in the area, Nymeria wouldn't be still sisterly towards him. She's not going to join up with them because she's a lone wolf. She's not going to keep going with them. That's not what she does. But wouldn't we get mention of her? How's anybody going to know? Well, like, somebody would have probably seen another wolf besides Grey Wind. But that's it. Don't we get rumors? Who knows if there were more than one wolf? How do we know that Rob wasn't turning into a wolf? Weren't you saying something about that? How well, that you, like, was just like the, that was where I was going to go with, with the way it, the echoes and the, the sounds. rumors that pop up where Rob can turn into a wolf. I thought that this is where they had originated, where with just the 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 odd tricks of sound, I think it's very viable that so one of the times right. Rob is calling out calmly, a wolf snarl happens to be louder than his voice, and it makes it seem like he's a snarling wolf, and then, but. 
I so throw in one more another wolf. wolf, and that could add to the commotion a little more. That's a and now because I have the maps here to show you, they were at the the crossroads or near there with when Arya let uh let Namiria go. Yeah, the fight is right between. Well, yeah, yeah, between, like, like it's right there. I know and it's so around the same. She place, wouldn't even but... had to move far. Like, and so those are, like, the woods that she's handling anyway. It's her home stomping ground. She's probably like, Grey Wind, let me show you this rock that'll be great to launch yourself at these motherfuckers, <laughs> and it's going to be loud as hell. I think Namiria was there fighting with them. That's that's an interesting one. I, I, I don't know. I'd have to think on it. I'm really excited now, actually, because we have, after this chapter is Danny. After Danny is Arya. Yeah. And so I want to see if she has any of her dreams. About a battle. A battle, or blood, fighting, anything like that, because then it might mean that it was this battle. Actually, the way you just said kind of gives a little more spin on this next bit, where little by little the sounds dwindled and died until there was only the wolf. As a red dawn broke in the east, Grey Wind began to howl again. Is that him bidding farewell right. to Is that Nymeria? Right, right. And so, Rob returned to her on a different horse. His shield slashed to pieces, but Rob himself seemed unhurt. Yet as he came closer, Catelyn saw that his mailed glove and the sleeve of his surcoat were black with blood. You're hurt, Cat said. And so he looks up and clenches and unclenches his fist, realizing it's covered in blood, and he goes, This isn't the worst of it. It's not mine. (laughs) I'm fine. It's Torin's blood. Father broke his leg. <laughs> Perhaps, or I don't know. And a mob of men followed him up the slope, dirty and grinning, with Theon and Great John Umber at the head. Between them, they dragged Sir Jamie Lannister and Bam! They threw him down in front of her horse. The Kingslayer. Howl announced unnecessarily. Very good, Howl. Very good. He's just happy to be here. Good on man. you, buddy. The Lan- uh, and, and I wrote this quote specifically. Lannister raised his head. I just love the disdain Lannister. immediately. Lady Stark, he said from his knees, blood running down one cheek from a gash across his scalp. I'd offer you my sword, but I seem to have mislaid it. I mislaid it. I lost my sword. Which, now, before we go too much further, Bronn made a comment about Tyrion misplacing... The spike on the his spike horse. On his helmet. And he yeah. said, I know, I, right where. I know right where I left that yeah. thing. And so, Catelyn, never never one to be outdone in the badassery, says, it is not your sword I want, sir. It's his sword I want, though. I'd like his sword. Oh. <laughs> and hey, uh, she says, give me my father and brother Edmure. Give me my daughters. Give me my lord husband. Give me liberty or give me death. <laughs> She doesn't add those last two. I added those. For flavor. Little rewrite. And he says, I've mislaid them as well, I fear. <laughs> A pity, Cat says coldly. Kill him, Rob. Take his head off. God. Guess who that is? That's Theon. So I mentioned to Zach the other day, because of taking Oops. notes in this chapter here, and Theon specifically, and I realized that that guy gets absolutely brutalized. Thank God, yeah. man. Fucking shut up, Theon. Shut the fuck up. You deserve it. Yeah. God. Alfie Allen redeemed, redeemed TV Theon yeah. for me, but book Theon has yet to. No remorse. Yeah, no, No fucking, yet, no. fuck you. Yeah, you're obnoxious. Fuck like, you. I don't even live in this world. I have no knowledge of politics or right to speak on this sort of heraldry, this society, this culture. That's a bad idea. He is... The king, like the most valuable under over Tywin, like himself, you could either hope to get Jamie, Cersei, or Tyrion. And Catelyn and, already fucked up one. And Jamie's even more of a higher and priority. And Jamie's anyway. a higher priority because he's a military commander. Right. He's, uh, he's out doing Not shit. Not to mention Cersei will lose her shit for him. Yeah. Tyrion will lose his shit for him. Tywin. And Tywin will lose his shit yeah. for him. So, like. The yeah, trifecta. they hit the jackpot. Like, that's yeah, the one to get. Him. Kill him, Rob. And Fuck Rob you, tells him, no, he's much more use alive than dead, you stupid, ignorant little fucktard. <laughs> Go die down the hill over there. And my lord father never condoned the murder of prisoners after a battle. Oh, yeah, that too. A wise man, Jamie says, and honorable. 
and she, Catelyn commands Jamie take him away. Uh, commands people take him away and put him in irons. And Rob, not to be outdone, says, "Do as my lady mother commands." Um, I do want to highlight that just to mention it to make sure I bring it up again on the Danny uh, episode next next episode because she made that command and Rob jumped in to do it when they were going to do it. Yeah. Whereas in Danny's chapter there's some commands issued by Danny where her men do not immediately follow. Yeah. Um but anyway, yeah. back to Cat. And Rob says put a strong guard around him. Lord Carstark will want his head. And that he will, the great John agrees. <laughs> And Lannister was led away. And Catelyn asked, why should Costock want him dead? <gasps> and Rob looked off into the woods with the same brooding look that Ned often got. He, he killed them. He killed them. Costock's son, Goblet Glover explains to Cat because Rob is still Torrin and Eddard, they're done. They've died, Mama. And Darren Horn would as well. But that's not the worst of it. Not the worst of it. Father's leg is broken. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker, Rob. Yeah, Rob is just being so dramatic here. And I love it. Uh, but Glover speaks up. Galbert Glover speaks up saying, Lannister had courage. When he saw that he was lost, he rallied his men and fought his way up the valley, hoping to reach Lord Rob and cut him down. And he almost did. And he says he mislaid his sword in Eddard <laughs> Costark's neck after taking Torrin's hand off and split Hornwood's skull open. So can we just shut the fuck yeah, up for a minute? Yo. He mislaid his sword in Torrin Karstar's neck, almost be te- yeah, decapitating right. him, Eddard, and before after, that, he took off Torrin's fucking hand. Yes. So we literally get what's going to happen to Ned and Jamie yeah. in that one fucking in that fight one of him so- trying to kill Rob Stark. Yeah. Like, fucking A, man. Fucking A. The maiming of the hand and the fucking splitting open of the neck after he split Hornwood's skull open, which, I mean, that's just going to happen to a lot of people. Everybody so. else. And Rob is being sulky about it, and Catelyn tells him, your men did what they were sworn to do, Rob. They died protecting their liege lord. Grieve for them, honor them for their nobility, but not now. Now is not the time for celebration. You have no time for grief. Because the Lannister... You don't need it. Put it away, Bran. You don't need that now. You don't need that now. Just a similar little, you know, you don't got time for grief. No time. Put it away... Stick it in the back. You may pocket. have lopped the head off the snake, but three quarters of the body is still curled around my father's castle, and I fucking love that I description. agree. Yeah, I, I thought we've that was won a super battle, awesome. not the war. And Theon just starts gushing. But such a battle! We've close to a hundred knights captive and a dozen Lord Bannermans, Lord Westerling, hmm, Robbie Dew's yeah. future wife's and family, cat. Is fuck the rest of them. Yeah, I liked how yeah. she's like, is one of them Tywin Lannister? Do you know, uh, 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 no. Then wipe the fucking smirk off your face, you little bitch. And she walks up and bitch slaps him into the ground. She's like, nah, kid, fucking nah. And just starts kicking him. She doesn't, but she does get him to wipe the smile Until off his face. Until you do take Lord Tywin, this war is far from done. And Rob raised his head and pushed his hair out of his eyes. <laughs> My mother is right. We still have River Run. (gasps) And then he looks into the woods. Fade to black. Fade to black. And I have a twin. Next week on General (laughs) Hospital. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the end of Catelyn's chapter. Um, Yeah, no. So Catelyn essentially has the right of it. She's keeping things in perspective. This is a big win for them, but... That's just going to piss Tywin. Tywin's going to be Oh, yeah. Well, you're his his little golden boy. And she gets that because... You know, two of her daughters are currently, but not her heir, who's right, Rob right Star, like here. right here with her. Like, so she knows that things just entered a whole new fucking yeah, stage in this yeah. war, and that Theon, being Theon, is not going to help anybody at the moment. And do so, you have an inductee? I do. My inductee is going to fucking Eddard Karstark for just being our first warning that yeah. Ned is is getting the fucking axe right through the neck, man. Shit. And 
it's it's kind of blazingly put in front of us. I mean, it's actually, if you think about it, it represents both of them because we get Eddard getting his head chopped off, and then we get Karstark getting his fucking head yeah, chopped off yeah. later by Rob too. So right, right. it's it like just a symbolism in that one little main, uh, not main, uh, little main, uh, little side off character. The symbolism yeah. that you can pull from him alone is fucking insane. It's wild. And so yeah, my inductee is Eddard Karstark. R.I.P. I mean, I guess we'll we'll just like light a fire in your honor because I'm not putting your bones down in like our our cool hideout because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's weird. But you know, hey, well, you we'll got one. Who's yeah, yours? so I'm doubling down on my theory, and so I'm inducting Namiria into this uh, for this week because I'm I, she's fucking there, man. She is in there. Yeah, that's a cool. She one. is fucking I shit like up. The idea of that. She is eating people, and then she's zipping off into the nowhere, into the nowhere, disappearing <laughs> off until she's needed again. And leading a big monster pack of fucking death wolves go through those woods. So, um, yeah, I'm moving it to Namiria because I'm convinced. Sweet. So, we did get some correspondence yeah. from France. Our friend Julian writes in. And he says, Ew! Ew! Loved that chapter. Again, some mighty smart blackfish, some heroic Jamie Lannister who almost got to rob. R.I.P. Karstark's 92, which, uh... my guy... Some powerful Catelyn, some stupidly bragging Theon. My inductee for this time is going to be Grey Wind. Fuck yeah. Yeah, With Namiria needs Namiria company. Namiria and Grey Wind. Hell yeah. We need that badass of a wolf in the Brotherhood. Now we got two. The best warrior of the gang. And who doesn't love a beautiful wolf howling? I sure do. Go Grey Wind. Oh, oh, oh. Valor Grey Windorus. Yeah, Valor Grey Windorus. Thank you, Julian. That was uh, a great one. Uh, Grey Wind. I loved a bit about Grey Wind in the Whispering Wood, just how intense it was. Whether there was just the one wolf or the two. Uh, great inductee. Yeah, and, I agree. And thank you for making me say Valor Grey Windorus because that was just fun. So. That's a fun thing to say. So we also received some correspondence from the Not So Silent Sisters. Burr, 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 burr. And so we have a Hey fellas, Uncepta Afton. Uncepta Afton is back. It's a little back. twist. It's back, all back, twist. Back. And I beg pardons for my absence. Let's get to it. I'll excuse it this time. <clears throat> Can I continue? Sure. I guess. Shut the if- fuck up. Do not interrupt Afton. So this is what death sounds like, she thought. Yeah. 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 This is, this is a rather important thing. fuck Theon, cocky little prick. Absolutely. So for this chapter, Unsepta Brandy will be inducting the Lady Catelyn to the Sisterhood. While I may not be a huge fan of her character, you have to admire her here. It certainly can't be easy being a woman in this world, but she plays the role she's meant to play, despite the inner turmoil she's experiencing, watching her eldest child ride off to battle. Mm. And, of course, her ability to make Theon wipe that stupid grin off his fucking face is a wonderful bonus. Once again... I love the Theon hate, so beautifully <laughs> spectacular inductee. Zach, go ahead and read oh, out on Septon Afton. <clears throat> uh, on Septon Afton would like to induct Hall Mullen, mainly because he is such a vigilant guard for Catelyn, and you have to love his loyalty, and also because he was always a man for stating the obvious, and I think him and I would have great banter. I'd give him plenty of sarcastic remarks and eye rolls when he says things everyone already knows. So you two could have your own little corner because so Hal th- Morin would drive me up a fucking wall. I'm really excited for this because he is the captain of the House of Guards. And yeah. He's, so he's he could technically be Captain Obvious. Because <laughs> he's Captain of the Guard. All right. I'm fucking done with this. <laughs> uh, the NASA Silent Sisters, thank you so much for your fucking inductees. That just ruined my life. <sighs> That's good news. That was a good one. Thank you guys for writing in. As I always <laughs> say, all men must die, but we are not men. Thank you guys. Thank you, Julian. Thank you guys for writing in. If you would like to write in also and have us read out your inductees, send in ones that don't suck. And also, we actually have never had somebody Whoa, send one yeah. in. Yeah, I was going to say that just implied <laughs> fucking heavily. Nor have we ever not read out an inductee that was sent in. Uh, we can be reached at our it's email. Ours that suck. Yeah, no kidding. Without manners, brotherhood at gmail.com. Uh, Instagram at manners without. I'm on Twitter at manners without. Zach is on Twitter at carstark92. C, not a K. 
Julian. <laughs> and then Facebook, we have a Facebook group, facebook.com slash brotherhood podcast. We've got all sorts of sweet bonus episodes up on our Patreon. You can check them out for a small monthly charge. I believe it's like two dollars, something low. Like there's Get we're low, cheap. We're low, cheap. low, yeah. low. But it's great stuff. Without manners, that's patreon.com slash without manners. Let us know what you think. Our next chapter we're reading is Danny Eight. And it is a doozy. Yeah, it's Danny's birth and the ceremony of trying to save Drogo. There's some shit going on. This also, uh, our next time dealing with Catelyn will be Catelyn's last chapter as well. We are getting down to the wire here with some of them. So Danny eight. Danny still has a couple because she's pretty important yeah. going into the last half of the last bit of this book. But. Yeah, so Danny's next chapter, and there's going to be some creepy magic shit going on. And right, and then immediately following that will be Arya's uh, the, next chapter. Last so chapter. Last chapter, yes. and that's the death of Ned. That will be Ned Stark's so passing as prepare. we go on. We remember all the Neds that died to They're not together, but they're dead Eddards. All those Eddards are just dying. Bad, bad. Valor to Harris. Peace.